<laughs> I want you to say, that gets my goat. That get my goat. I, I guess I hear what you're saying, and I'm not meaning to turn it into a negative, but most of the time I, I do tend to look at the negative. I've lived a certain amount of time, and I look back on it and I wonder, well, what do I have to show for it? What have I done? It seems like very little. But I'm not done yet. I guess there's still more out there. The places you'll go in the rest of that time to the morgue, just the one place that I think you're going to go did, really soon. Did, yeah, did yeah. the tea leaves tell you something you didn't share with <laughs> That's me? That's right. Don't eat the cake. <laughs> <laughs> the, the fact that there are things that we want to do and we keep not doing them or the things that make us happy and we don't do those things because it's... Easier not to, or they're because there's hard. so many distractions, or because of short attentions of our our ADHD, or what what is it? AD. I think it's just ADD. The H is hyperactive, so it's attention deficit hyperactive disorder, and I think that's what they call it now only. But it used to be originally just called ADD, which is attention deficit disorder. Okay, well then that second one, because of that. I keep not doing those things. And and I don't know. There, we, I've been sitting in this chair so many times when we and I talk about something that we're going to do or writing or a project or having a gay-centric story on the Dune Steve or whatever like that. Wait, we actually did do that one. Mm-hmm. But, but we'll get all excited and we're like, Ooh, oh, the, all the places will go. The donations will receive. <laughs> the Parsec Awards will win. The listeners will gain. And then we don't do it or... Because sometimes you won't. <laughs> Okay. I I guess you're right, because sometimes they won't, (laughs) except when they don't. That's right. That's the thing that I looked at it is, you know, you've got the thing that you want to do and you could wind up in the waiting place, going elsewhere, doing other things, waiting for your hair to grow or whatever. You know, there there's lots of ways you could wind up in a slump and unslumping yourself is hard to do. There's other things that can derail you, but you have that place that you want to go. And you, you and I, we know the place that we want to go. And there's other people that are still trying to figure it out, like they talk about at the start of the story where you look down the different streets and you try and figure out which one you want to go down. You don't know. And what I'm kind of here to say is just to all those people who are listening, both of you, whatever it is that inspires you. You know, we've had various stories of people on our show, people who wanted to do art and they decided to get on the Dune Steve and say, hey, I'd like to do some art for your show for a while. And doing art with the show helped them to get art elsewhere. That's right. I remember that. And Somebody had, had a, uh, what do they call it? A showing? Uh, right. Yeah. They were able to get into a, a showing that you had to be a professional artist and they had this thing on a website that wasn't their own so they could call themselves a professional and they were in there with all these other great artists and uh, there have been other people, people that want to write, that got their stories on our show, people who wanted to do music. There's People who are listeners, maybe you're not creatively inclined. Maybe you're scientifically inclined. Maybe you're businessically inclined. Maybe I don't know words very well and I shouldn't be a writer. But, you know, whatever it is that drives you, that's what this thing is here to to inspire you to do. Is to Whatever that mountain is that you want to climb, it's waiting. And so be on your way. I just, I don't know. There's something I love. I think I'm going to make a shirt to go along with the whole why not shirt that we have. And I'll say why not on the back. And then it'll say your mountain is waiting. So get on your way on the front. (laughs) And I'm going to buy that shirt for myself. I'm going to wear it every day until it smells awful and must be disposed of with gasoline and flames. I've worn this shirt one day and it already smells like that. (laughs) Well, no, that's neat. The whole why not thing. It really did grab me and, and, and pull me along. And it's fun to say all this time later, even though I've sort of forgotten what it means. And it's neat that you've got something now that you can say at the end of an episode here and there. Or, the, you know, it's a shorthand and it means this conversation. You and I want to write for a living. You want to not have to go to a soul-sucking job 
And here's a little bit of trivia, and we can cut this out if you want to. I had a dream last night. I, I, this is the truth. And it was this morning, because I don't remember the dreams that I have at night unless I wake up from them. Right. But I do remember the last dream I have before the alarm goes off or, you know, I wake up for some reason. Maybe everybody's like that. But I was at work where I used to work, where you still work. I was there. And it had been a long time since I was there, and I was sort of lost, and there were all of these obligations and responsibilities that people were just giving to me and talking to me as though I knew I was supposed to already know how to do all this stuff. And for some reason, in the way that dreams are, I didn't say, whoa, 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 whoa. how am I supposed to know how to do this? You know, I just assumed that I'd be able to get to it. And anyway, I just got more and more in over my head. And the thing with news is, you know, it has to be done now because it's going to be on live in five minutes. So finally, somebody was like berating me that I wasn't doing, you know, the eighth thing on the list in time for them or whatever. And I just unloaded and I cursed and I you know, told them to die. And, I, and, you know, the stuff that you can do in dreams, I guess, people <laughs> t tend not to do in real life. And, and she, instead of apologizing or realizing her place or whatever, went steely hard and said, that's it. You know, you're, you're, you're finished here. And she called me by your name. <laughs> and then she went off to get like the general manager or whatever and told me to clean out my desk. And at that moment, I realized that I was you and I'd just gotten you fired. <laughs> it, there was something really horrible about that. And I don't know if then the, my alarm went off or then I woke up, but what will my wife say when I arrive home to tell her the news that Rish got me fired? <laughs> By impersonating me somehow. Hmm. Well, yeah, it was. I mean, it was like a, the change up or, or, you know, any one of those 80s body switching movies. Yeah, any one of those. And so Vice you, versa. Like father, like son. So you were off somewhere climbing a ladder to jump off because you were stuck in my body. And I was in you thinking, well, I can do this. I, get, I, I don't know. This is me filling in the blanks. You know, and it, it doesn't usually work that way that the other person completely destroys the life of the body he's in and you know he loses his wife and his children and but it should work that way because that's really how it would probably go well that's how it would go here in, in this case but dude there was a reason for oh but you're always your job sucks <laughs> i i know it does because i got to experience it for a short time <laughs> and i don't know maybe you have perks that i didn't have but oh the places i don't want to go again so one of the things that we always talk about is, boy, I can't wait until I can put this behind me, do what I want to do for a living and, and feel creatively fulfilled each day or, and, and be one of those where the alarm goes off and you're like, oh, yeah, let's go to work, which almost nobody experiences as, right. as we know, because life tends not to work that way for everybody. It's, all, it's only the select few that get to do what they want to do for a living. Yeah, that may just come from the fact that those are the people that actually risk it, that do the thing that's hard instead of the thing that's easy. I don't know. It's interesting because I was thinking that, you know, I got a call not too long ago. My kids are starting up soccer and they call and they're like, yeah, we really need a coach for your daughter's team. So if you are willing and able to, we would really like it if you could be their coach. And I said, you know what? I'm totally willing to do that. I would love to do that. But... I'm not really able to I get home too late at night to be able to do anything. It would only be a short period of time before it's dark by the time I get home. Can't have a soccer practice after it's dark. You've got to do it while it's still daylight out. And so, yeah, that's something I've never been able to do for any of my kids. And I was thinking, you know what? I've got a brand new baby. And five years from now or so, he's going to be starting up soccer I need to get in gear so that by the time he is old enough to do that, that I can just say, yeah, no, that's fine. I just work from home, so it doesn't really matter when. I mean, we could have practices at noon if you want or whatever. I would really like to be able to do that. The mountain's waiting, so I guess I'll get on my way, see if I can uh, achieve that. Well, is this building to some kind of announcement? Not really. Not really. I, there may come an announcement at some point, but if I had an, I would be further along my way towards the mountain if I had an announcement to make. 
But yeah, I really want to be able to do that. You know, there was a time many years ago when I would turned 30 and I was like, okay, by the time I'm 35, which of course has come and gone and I'm no closer to where I started because I've been in the waiting place. (laughs) But I really want to get going on it. And I think maybe it just takes prioritizing and, I, and I've talked with my wife about that. We were starting up, we were trying to do a new exercise program together. So we started doing it. And since we're not home at the same time, we're going to have to do it separately. We, it's just a video that you do on TV, you set it up, you turn it on and you run around and jump and do jumping jacks and all that kind of crap. So I would do it in the morning when I had time and she would do it in the afternoon while I was at work and she had time. And we started doing it and I'd go, oh yeah, how did you go? Oh, I never did it. I didn't have time. And I kept getting on her case. Oh, you got to make it a priority. That's the problem. If it's a priority, you won't miss it. But you're, oh, I've got to mow the lawn. I've got to wash my shoes off or I've got to polish the linens or whatever it is that you do. (laughs) I thought I was the only one that polished the linens nightly. (laughs) But, you know, you find other things to do if you don't make it a priority. Every other little thing that comes up, you're like, oh, I better get on that right now. And then by the end of the day, you're like, oh, shoot, I never did the thing that was most important. But, you know, whatever. I'll do it tomorrow. I think that's the one thing that I lack in my writing is making it the priority, the thing that I really want to do and I put first. That's the thing that I do first before anything else because it's the thing that I want the most. And so that's the thing that I'm going to start working on right away is making it a priority, getting myself to do it first, and then the other things can come later when I get the time for them. Or they can wait till tomorrow because, you know, they're not as important. Well, the lawn can wait a couple hours. That's true. How long does it take to do this exercise regimen? It's a half hour to an hour, depending on the uh, early on in the program. It's a little less intense. And then, you know, after you've been doing it for a while, they're like, all right, you're ready for the tough stuff. And then they crank it up on you. Hmm. I actually sprained my back doing it the other day. So I'm taking a week off from it. So maybe now's a good time to To write write instead. You know, people will come on Facebook from time to time. And encourage us to share more of our own stories on the show. And yet I always second guess or I, you know, I I always wonder, I always drag my feet on that. I worry, you know, what if somebody says, I'm no good, get out of your kid, you got no future. Yada, yada, yada. Save the clock tower. I don't want to put myself up in a place where I can fail. But, you know, that's really the only way that you accomplish anything or grow is is, is, there's got to be some sweat. There's got to be some risk involved. I mean, I I can't compare it to exercise because I don't know that there's risk in that. Because you don't know anything about exercise, so you can't really make that comparison. I've never even read a book about exercise. (laughs) In fact, I've never read a book at all. I think we've explained that. (laughs) I I, I don't know. With, With writing, I write a lot, but I don't share it with anybody, really. Every once in a while, you'll get a story from me. But you just said today, for every one story I share with you, there's probably 10 that I don't. That's my guess. And there are people out there that say, well, go ahead. You know, you've got a forum. Our buddy Ian, any time we air an episode of the Dune Steve, and it's not one of our stories, we're wasting our time. Remember that? Those were his words. Not that he would ever listen to our podcast, but... What a weird thing to say. And it stuck with me all these years. I mean, he said it at the very beginning. Yeah, he said that like after a really early episode. I don't know. I guess he thought that we were going to be like variant frequencies or whatever. where We just run our own things. And if we had, would things have turned out differently? Would we be in a better place now? Would we be selling our stuff? Would we be? I don't know. Would we have many listeners and We'd fans? We'd have to write more often, that's for sure. <laughs> and yeah, that's something that you talk about all the time. Is And we've discussed it on the show. That someday the show as it now exists will end and it will all just be our stories and then the occasional outside story that we ask for. Mm -hmm. And the beauty of that scenario is that there's a ticking clock and pressure to write something. You know, you've got something that needs to air in the next episode and you haven't written it yet. Write it now. Right. Because we got to do voices and, you know, whatever we'll do. And, and I would imagine that once we get to that point, sometimes it'll just be straight reads. 
sometimes it'll be full cast with sound effects and, and, and music and all that. But other times, I don't know. There's something powerful about just one person reading a story for certain kinds of stories. Right. I mean, they'll probably always have us. Right. Which is an advantage, unless I moved away or something like that. Even then, we'd still just do it over Skype or something like that. It, it wouldn't end. It never, it never ends. ends. <laughs> <laughs> Recently, we had Brian Lincoln on the show. And at the very first time we'd ever had a guest host with us that actually existed. <laughs> and, I, I, you know, I have to kind of admire him because he's gearing up to do this podcast novel of his own. And obviously he's been inspired by Abby Hilton with her cowrie catchers thing. And for every Brian Lincoln, there's probably 10 other people that have been inspired by her going out there, putting out her stuff in a very professional way. So and 11 people in all you're saying? Because there's really only one Brian Lincoln. So one Brian Lincoln and then there's 10 others. Okay, there are 11 people and me <laughs> who have been inspired by the Guild of the Cowrie Catchers or just by the way that she has been able to market herself as a writer, as a as a teller of tales. And, I mean, we contribute to that a little bit with our voices and stuff. And there's art and there's music, and, but it's mostly her. I mean, she narrates it. Right. She wrote the story. She created these characters. She is the main voice saying, check this out and hyping herself up on her podcast and probably others and, and, and things like that. That's inspiring because that's something that is hard for me. It's hard for me to say, I wrote this and I think it's good. And you should too. She has confidence in her own work and that confidence is paid off where she was talking about. And that's another thing I would never do. She talked about the kind of money that she made from podcasting and it just, it made my mouth open wide as as wide as it did the first time I saw that Fast Times at Ridgemont High swimming pool scene, I was just like, wow, how is that possible? Wow, that's, that's good money. And now Brian is going to do that with his, with Malcontent, which is his thing. And you and I talk about doing that too. You know, it's just like, hey, we've written this and please give us money to listen to it or to read it. It's so hard to take that first step. <laughs> but if only one person said that was friggin' great, when's the next thing? That's one more person that then is doing that now. And chances are it'd be more than one person. We'll never know because we haven't done it. We will know. The time is coming. Hopefully that's something that y'all look forward to. I don't know if that's uh, the case or not. Or if you're just thinking, oh no, this time is coming. But it is coming and it's probably coming relatively soon in the scheme of things. And this episode is just another kind of step along that stairway, I think, that you need that inspiration and that gumption and you know you actually have to do it and be on your way i just wanted to bring that here and and, and talk about that and just you know whatever it is that uh, you want to do listen to this story a few times and think about that hopefully you get that same inspiration as as i got you hear those final lines and you think yeah i've been spinning my wheels here all this time but it's time to get on your way and accomplish that thing and you know there'll be bumps along the way there'll be troubles sometimes everybody will be watching you on tv like they say in the story other times they won't because sometimes they don't and you know that's just part of it you know we talk about how failure is hard to deal with but it's part of it it's not hard if it's not part of it if it's easy, then yeah, you know, whatever. It, it, you Maybe you'll, it'll be like the friggin' t-ball game where if you strike out, well, they let the little kid throw the ball out into the field and pretend that that was a hit and run to first base. There's nothing to that. That's why only four-year-olds play that game. But the real game where you have to have to stand up there and have the guy pitch the ball at you 100 miles an hour and try and hit that thing, that's the hard game. And that's why you see the adult guys that train all day long trying to play that. And yeah, that's the way it is. You know, if there's no opportunity to fail, if you send your story and no matter where you send it, it's always accepted. When you never had to deal with the failure, then you, it probably wasn't worthwhile to begin with. You don't learn. You don't progress. You don't become better. You don't move on and grow. So yeah, that's just as important, I think, that sometimes that you don't. And you know, that's the way it is. It's tough. It sucks. It can put you in a slump. <laughs> but uh, yeah, you have to move on through it and climb onto the top of that mountain. 
I guess it's time to be on my way. Well, there you go. That sounded like a final line in a podcast if I've ever heard one. All right. Well, thanks for listening, everybody. Yeah, maybe we can follow this up and talk a little bit next week uh, just about writing and yeah. projects that you're working on or I, I don't know, whatever happens. I would love to do that. Maybe and... that's something that we can do a little bit is just say, hey, this is my project. I'm working on this. Maybe those will be stories that people will eventually actually hear. I don't know if that's something that you want to talk about the story that you're writing before you're finished with it. And then people hear it later and they're like, oh, well, I kind of already knew how it was going to end because you told me before in the podcast. <laughs> I yeah, don't know then, if that'll backfire. But it, then at least you finished a story. And, I, and I, I remember there being stories that I talked about while they were in progress years ago. And somebody said, so whatever ended up happening with that story? And I was like, oh, you know, I lost interest. And I'm like, oh, shoot, come on, man. And that gave me the push to finish it. And I wouldn't have finished it if I hadn't shared it with that guy or whatever it is. And, you know, sometimes that's what you need is somebody to say, hey, whatever happened with that? And, and you'd be like, fudge, I forgot about that. You got, do you want to read that? <laughs> I don't know. I, I mean, it seems like to me that's what being a writer is about. And Stephen King wrote that book about the Boston Red Sox. Uh -huh. called Faithful, him and, and this guy Onan, right? Somebody Onan. Anyway, it, it was just for some crazy reason they decided to blog about each game of, of this season, and it turned out to be the season when the Red Sox won the World Series, but they didn't know that when they started it. Right. And at one point King is talking about watching this, and I've told you this before, but I don't care. Uh, he's watching this game on TV, and they're showing the, the batter and the catcher, and they show the, uh, the the crowd behind home plate. And he leaned forward and he thought he recognized one of the people that was sitting there. And he's like, oh, that's... And then he realized, oh, no, 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 it can't be that person because that guy is dead. And he started to watch the game again. And then he thought, what if it was that guy? What if I had like an HD TV and I got close to it and I looked and it was that guy who I knew was dead? And he's like, what if as I looked at the crowd... I started to recognize other people who I had known who were dead in the crowd of this baseball game. And he's like, suddenly I started thinking of this story. And, and then a minute later, somebody hit, you know, a, a triple and I got all into the game again and I forgot about that thing. And when I read that, I was just like, oh, no, uh, he lost interest. What a great idea for a story. story. Oh, my gosh. And because, you know, as a writer... I, I recognize it, it captured my imagination in a way that the talking about baseball did. <laughs> right. And just this year, he put out a story called Face in the Crowd. And when I heard the title of that story, I was like, is that that story that you talked about in Faithful? And I read the synopsis and sure enough, it's it that was. story. And I was just so excited, like, I, almost as if I had been there when he got, in a way I was, <laughs> I was there when he had the idea for that story. And, and I just, I don't, I love that. And I, I hope that that face in the crowd story got written because somebody said, Hey, Steve, do you remember in faithful where you're talking about, why didn't you write that story? Do you still, and, you know, and a thing like that, you used to always talk about two or three stories. And, and I, and I don't know if me bugging you about them ever got you to be like, all right, yeah, it must be a good idea. I'll finish the story or whatever. <laughs> but sometimes you need that. You don't, and we did whole episodes about whether our writing is good or not, but sometimes you need somebody to say, whoa, whoa, whoa that's a good idea. And we'll talk about this 10 months from now when we do the broken mirror stories. But I told my cousin, hey, I had an idea while I was driving over to your house about, and I told him like these three ideas that I had for a story. And he said, oh, that's really good. Who wrote that? And I was like, I wrote that a hole yeah, or I haven't written it yet, but I came up with it on the way to your house. And he's like, oh, that's good. And my cousin who doesn't care about fiction responded to it. And so I was like, oh, I've got something. And, and so I wrote that story, you know, and, and I, I thought it was good. And apparently somebody else did too. And so th sometimes to bounce your ideas off somebody else and to see what they respond to or whatever is as useful as coming up with the ideas yourself. No, we're not talking about the same dang thing anymore. I'm sorry. <laughs> but no, no. What we're talking we were about talking is about talking maybe more. in future episodes talking about, hey, I had this idea for a story. What do you think? Right. And all that. So that somebody would hold us accountable and say, yeah, I want to read that story. Did you finish it? And, and instead of lowering our heads in shame and saying, you know, I lost interest, there was superhero cartoon related porn that needed to be watched. 
you hold your head up high and say, yes, it sucks, but read it. Right. You can say, I, yeah, I wrote that one. Here it is. It's the next episode of the show, actually. Get ready. Wouldn't that be cool? I think it would be awesome. I know that we have a couple of people that like our show well enough to give us money, well enough to give us art, well enough to cross stitch or draw or whatever it is. There are people out there that would be like, I'll pay to read that story. Yeah, I'm interested to see. The time is coming, most definitely. You're right. Oh, I didn't realize that I did. Anyways, I think it's time to end this episode. We've gone for a while, and it's not supposed to be a triple episode or anything like that. So I'm going to go ahead and cut it off. Nip it in the bud, as As it it were. were. And just say thanks for listening, folks. And I'm sure you'll hear more about this in the future. Let's uh, hope. If they don't, we did something wrong. Right. But uh, yeah, I'm Big Anklevich. I'm Rich Outfield. Your mountain is waiting, so get on your way. (laughs) Good night. That was supposed to be your cue to say, why not? Why not? (coughs) (laughs) Oh, shoot, I wasn't recording. Again! That Gets My Go is produced under a Creative Commons 3.0 license. Apparently, the creative in Creative Commons doesn't mean anything. 